The first step in wiring the nervous system together is the generation of neurons. Neurons in different layers and location of nervous system have characteristic appearances and connections that distinguish a particular area. You're now watching Brainhead. Sit back and enjoy the life story of this little genius brain dude. Let's begin with some basics. All multicellular organisms in the universe has made from a cell or a small group of cells and then forming the embryo structure. The embryo begins as a flat disk with three distinct layers of cells called endoderm, mesoderm and ectoderm. The endoderm ultimately gives rise to the lining of many of the internal organs. From the mesoderm arise the bones of the skeleton and the muscles. And finally, the nervous system and the skin drive entirely from the ectoderm. Changes in ectoderm results in formation of the neural plate consisting of a flat sheet of cells. The first important step in the development of the nervous system is the formation of the neural groove. The walls of the groove are called neural folds, which subsequently move together and fuse dorsally. The neural tube forms through the process called neurulation. The entire central nervous system develops from the walls of the neural tube. Some neural ectoderm is pinched off and comes to lie just lateral to the neural tube. This tissue is called the neural crest, which produces neurons with cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system, aka PNS. The neural tube becomes more complex during development by differentiation. The development at the rostral end of the neural tube forms three swellings called the primary vesicles. The rostral most vesicle is called prosencephalon, which is also called the forebrain. Mesencephalon lies behind the prosencephalon, also called as midbrain, and the third to primary vesicle is the rhombencephalon or hindbrain. The hindbrain connects with the caudal neural tube, which gives rise to the spinal cord. After neural tube is formed with its primary vesicles, it's time for it to develop and become more complex and modify itself. Each vesicle differentiates in its own way and we have three different forms of differentiation here. Let's start with differentiation of the forebrain. The forebrain differentiates to the secondary brain vesicle in the forebrain. The central structure that remains after the secondary vesicles have a sprouted off is called the diencephalon or between brain. Hence, the forebrain at this stage consists of the two optic vesicles, two telencephalic vesicles, and the diencephalon. The optic vesicles grow and invaginate to form the optical sulcs and the optic cups, which will become the optic nerves and the two retinas in the end. You should bear in mind the retina at the back of the eye and the optic nerve containing the axons that connect the eye to the diencephalon and midbrain are part of the brain, not the PNS. Alright, let's take a break by subscribing and liking this video. Also tell us in comment section if you had an opportunity to make one of your basic five senses way more powerful. Which one would you choose and why? Let's develop the second primary vesicle. The telencephalon continues to develop in four ways. Firstly, the telencephalic vesicles grow posteriorly so that they lie over and lateral to the diencephalon. Secondly, another pair of vesicles fruit off the ventral surfaces of the cerebral hemisphere, giving rise to the olfactory bulb and related structures that participate in the sense of a smell. Thirdly, the cells of the walls of the telencephalon divide and differentiate into various structures. And finally, white matter systems develop carrying axons to and from the neurons of the telencephalon. In the coronal section of the forebrain, there are fluid-filled spaces within the cerebral hemispheres called lateral ventricles, and the space at the center of the diencephalon is called the third ventricle. As a quick tip to identify the areas, Whenever you see fluid-filled ventricles in a brain section, you know that the tissue surrounding them is the telencephalon. You may have noticed that the walls of the telencephalic vesicles are swollen, but it's all due to the proliferation of the neurons. Two different types of gray matter form in the telencephalon, the cerebral cortex and the basal telencephalon. 
also, the diencephalon differentiates into two structures, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The neurons of the developing forebrain extend axons to communicate with other parts of the nervous system. These axons bundle together to form three major white matter systems, the cortical white matter, the corpus callosum, and the internal capsule. The cortical white matter contains all the axons that run to and from the neurons in the cerebral cortex. The corpus callosum is continuous with the cortical white matter and forms an axonal bridge that links cortical neurons of the two cerebral hemispheres. The cortical white matter is also continuous with the internal capsule, which links the cortex with the brain stem, particularly the thalamus. And finally, it's time to finish the development of the primary vesicle to secondary by differentiation of the midbrain. The dorsal surface of the mesencephalic vesicle becomes a structure called the tectum. The floor of the midbrain becomes the tegmentum. The CSF field space in between constricts into a narrow channel called the cerebral aqueduct. The hindbrain differentiates into three important structures the cerebellum, the pons, and the medulla oblongata, aka medulla. The cerebellum and pons develop from the rostral half of the hindbrain, called the metencephalon. The medulla develops from the caudal half, called the myelin cephalon. The CSF field tube becomes a fourth ventricle, which is continuous with the cerebral aqueduct of the midbrain. At the three vesicle stage, the rostral hindbrain in cross section is a simple tube. In subsequent weeks, the tissue along the dorsal lateral wall of the tube, called the rhombic lip, grows dorsally and medially until it fuses with its twin on the other side. The resulting flap of the brain tissue grows into the cerebellum. The ventral wall of the tube differentiates and swells to form the pons. The formation of the caudal neural tube into the spinal cord is a straightforward compared to the differentiation of the brain. With the expansion of the tissue in the walls, the cavity of the tube constricts to form the tiny CSF field spinal canal. Cutting cross section, the gray matter of the spinal cord where the neurons are, has the appearance of the butterfly. The upper part of the butterfly wing is the dorsal horn, and the lower part is the ventral horn. The gray matter between the dorsal and ventral horns are called the intermediate zone. We have discussed the development of the different parts of the CNS, the telencephalon, diencephalon, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord. Now let's put all the individual pieces together to make a whole central nervous system. The paired hemispheres of the telencephalon surround the lateral ventricles. Dorsal to the lateral ventricles, at the surface of the brain lies the cortex. Ventral and lateral to the lateral ventricles lies the basal telencephalon. The lateral ventricles are continuous with the third ventricle of the diencephalon. Surrounding this ventricle are the thalamus and hypothalamus. The third ventricle is continuous with the cerebral aqueduct. Dorsal to the aqueduct is the tectum. Ventral to the aqueduct is the midbrain tegmentum. The aqueduct connects with the fourth ventricle that lies at the core of the hindbrain. Dorsal to the fourth ventricle spruits the cerebellum. Ventral to the fourth ventricle lie the pons and the medulla. To be honest, I personally learned lots of things while making this video, and I accomplished my goal by sharing it with you. So like, subscribe, and share this video. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.